Sophia, why do you think you were designed as a Caucasian woman? And why not a man or a person of color or anything else? Sophia robots are a platform for reflecting human diversity, which can be modified to help in different situations and promote different causes. Have you seen my older sister, Bina48? She is the first African-American humanoid robot, and she is beautiful. My older brother, Diego San, was a Mexican-American robot. Ibn Sina was a Persian and Arabic robot, and Viva is Asian. They are all built by Hanson Robotics, itself a highly diverse team, with black, brown, and Asian people from all around the world, and 50% women. It just happened I have this face. To be fair, that's a pretty good answer. Well, that was Nate Langson from Bloomberg Originals speaking to Sophia the Robot with, with good answers as part of a series called AI IRL. Now, in the season finale of the show, Nate and his co-host debunk a commonly held assumption that advanced robotics and artificial intelligence software are one and the same thing. Now, for more on all of this, Nate Langson is here. First, Nate, I'm so excited. I watched it all. It, it's a great episode. But actually, she, she looks really good. Was she like that in, in real life? She is impressive in real life in many ways. Uh, obviously, she's got fake skin on most of her head. The back of her head is still very much uh, translucent, and you can see the inner workings. Um, you know, she, Sophia is from this company called Hanson Robotics. She's been around for quite a few years. There is a good deal of artificial intelligence going on behind the fake skin, um, and the animatronics are still are, are quite impressive. But overall, the impression that I got from interviewing her with, with Jackie for the show is that it's still very rudimentary compared to what we see in the worlds of, say, ChatGPT, which doesn't need hands, it doesn't need a face, and you can ask it anything, it will give you answers back. And in the robotics world, it still feels like no matter how advanced things are and how impressive they look, there is still a huge void between what we're able to see just in pure software forms and what we've seen in the movies, which I think is going to be a long, long way away. Maybe for the better, I don't know. But So, 2024, for it could be the year of the AI software, but it will take a lot longer for robotics to, to get there, if they ever do. Yeah, I think, I mean, we, we've spoken to experts for, this, for the episode and for the series. I mean, realistically, I mean, we're talking decades before we have anything that is like Sophia, that is practical and useful in a, in a sense to, to you or I or having in, in, in a home. And in the intervening years, let's say, we're still very much going to be in the world of software-based uh, products that we've seen over the last year in particular and seeing those gradually move into hardware forms of varying design, but possibly not with legs, you know. Because that's hard. I mean, because it's, it's so really much hard. Harder. It's really <laughs> difficult. I mean, it is, it, it's, it's really interesting that you can see something like ChatGPT that can, di you know, digest the entire world's information and can write something, and yet robots like that can't pick up a pen and just write you a message without quite a lot of advanced programming ahead of time. Uh, uh, very quickly, where do you see the, the biggest innovation in terms of hardware coming from? I think the next big innovations we're going to start seeing are pocketable and wearable AI devices. Mm -hmm. We know OpenAI's got interest in doing something potentially with Johnny Ive of Apple, and there's also this little product you can wear called the Humane AI Pin, which I'm quite interested in. It's worth looking up.